Today we're going to be talking about the power in oblique meridians formula. We started with the optical cross. We started with this lens. We talked about the two principal meridians, meridians or power that are on here. They're 90 degrees apart. We can always find them by looking at the script and doing flat transposition. Next, we talked about the 30, 45, 60 rule, which is the way of using the percent of the cylinder to determine three other points in between here. You can do that using this chart for the other increments of 5, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, etc. down the road. You'll find the chart in the back of the optical tutorials book and elsewhere online. That still leaves 71 of those points between here and here that we're not sure of. The only way to determine that is doing a little math and that's using the powers in oblique meridians formula. That's exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to skip the bench. We're going to head straight to the whiteboard and work some problems. Your basic calculator will not work for this. You do need a scientific calculator, one that has a sign button and a square button. It's worth having any mobile device. You can find an app online, probably free. Uh, there are a couple other formulas that will work as we go through the course that uh, it'll come in handy. Let's head to the whiteboard, learn the powers in oblique meridians formula. We can put those three things together and then we can start working prison problems. So, and we are back at the whiteboard again. I probably shouldn't sing, but yeah, too bad. Do not panic is this brief introduction. We're going to be doing a little bit of math. Don't worry about it. As you well know, math. Me, not so good. So I can do this. I have every confidence that you can do this as well. Don't panic. One of the reasons that I say that is because although this looks fancy and it's a formula and we're going to use a scientific calculator to solve for the missing power, there's nothing new here. If you can work 30, 45, 60, this is the exact same question. The total power is that, what is that power at whatever question that we're trying to solve for? Nothing new, exactly the same. The sine of a squared is just another way of saying the degree that we actually have versus what is the degree that we actually need in order to solve a problem. Same thing. DC. Cylinder value, same. You have both from your prescription and from flat transposition. S, sphere. Sphere power from your prescription. Nothing new. Same parts, same pieces, same puzzle. We're just going to solve it in a slightly different way. We're going to do three examples. We're going to do them step by step. We'll talk through them a little bit, and you'll get a handle on it and be able to work these. Then we can move on to PRISM. All right, uh, example number one for power in oblique meridians formula. We have a prescription minus 475 minus 225 at axis 112. A completely ordinary and extremely realistic prescription. You'd stock this lens. It may very well be in the back. You could fill this prescription, send somebody out the door. You might see this thing all day long. Just an ordinary prescription. In this case, Insurance company lab made the glasses, you got them back, and the PD is just a mess. They're way out here, or they're way in here. Something's wrong. So you have an error at 180 degrees, because all PDA errors run along the horizontal 0, 180 line. 112 is not at 180 degrees. That's where your power is right now. If I take 180 and I take away my 112, I have a difference of 68 degrees of position, 68 degrees away from what I need. That is going to be our variable A is going to be 68. 
Notice that 68 does not fall into our nice easy 30, 45, 60 rule. It wouldn't even fall into our 65 or our 70 rule. That is why we have to go through this in order to come up with our final answer. This is our formula, and we'll start plugging this in. If you have your scientific calculator, by all means, you can follow along. And if you do it right, you can do it in one fell swoop. You can just keep going and just plug this in. You'll end up down here. Anyone who's not familiar with algebra, me included, uh, the, the way this is written, this is parentheses and then this variable implies that you would multiply there. So we're going to add the multiplication sign there so that it's a whole lot clearer for you. The power that I am looking for is equal to the sine of A, the sine of 68 squared, multiplied times my cylinder plus my sphere. If I take my 68, go ahead, put it into your calculator, just enter 6, 8, and hit the sign button. That's going to give you the 0 0.9271. Got it? Good. The next step is that we're going to square that. So take your 9271 that should already be in front of you, and it might be a whole lot longer than that, and hit your square button. You're now going to be here. Now we're going to take this number, hit your multiplication, x, times minus 225, which usually is 2.25, and then you hit your plus minus button, so that appears. And you're going to end up here. You're going to end up at minus 1.93. Now add that to your minus 475, which is your sphere, and you're going to end up at minus 6.68. 68 degrees away from 112, at 180 degrees, the power in the meridian that we need is going to be minus 6.68. And when we get into prism, you'll understand why we need this and where this comes into play in Prentice's formula and other applications. Let's do two more. And I'll try to slow down a little bit, maybe. And I think I'll probably remove this. It, it's correct in the way it's written, but Maybe we'll leave that out this time and add it as only the last step and see if that doesn't make it a little bit clearer. So let's try one more. Example number two. Very realistic script. Our plus 375 would probably push it out of the stock range. It would be something that would go off to the lab and come back. Something got messed up somewhere along the line. We have got an error in the 90. Just to start setting the stage for prism questions, the 90th would be an OC error. One OC is up here, one OC is down here, or vice versa. We need to figure out how much power is in this meridian in order to solve for how much prism was created. I have my power at 14. I need my power at 90. 90 is 76 degrees away from what I have. 76 is going to be my A variable. Working through the problem. The total power I need is equal to the sine of A squared multiplied times my cylinder value added to my sphere. The sine of 76 squared multiplied my cylinder plus my sphere. If I take my 76 Put it into the calculator. Go ahead, hit your sign button. You're going to end up with 0 0.9702, blah, 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 blah. Take that and then hit your square, and you're going to end up with 0 0.9414, which we can now multiply times our minus 275. When you hit equal, you're going to get a minus 2.589, which is where you should be on your calculator. If you're not here, backtrack, work it as often as you need to, in whatever way you need to, so you end up at the right place. Now I can do my minus 2.589 plus 
plus my 375 sphere. When I add those two together, I end up with a plus 1.16. At 90 degrees in this particular prescription, the way this particular lens is laid out with my strongest power at way down at 14, at, at 90 degrees, I've got plus 1.16. Once I have this, I can solve for my error in 90 and determine how much prism was created by the error. That would require the power in both eyes, which is where we're headed. So don't jump ahead. I'm going to do one more of these, and then we can start hitting those prism problems. So let's knock out number three. Very ordinary script minus 625, minus 375, an axis of 37. Same thing, error in the PD. You've got a whole lot of power going on everywhere on this lens. The PDs are off. You're going to have some problems. People are going to be saying that they have problems seeing through them, headaches, whatever it might be. So we need to solve for the power at 180 degrees before we can proceed to find out how much of an error was actually created. 180 minus our 37 is 143 degrees. Difference of position. 143 is going to be our A. And I know at least one of you out there, and I'm very proud of you, is saying, wait, 180 and 0, 0, 37, 37 makes more sense. You're right. If you chose to use 37 instead, and you hit the sign, you're going to end up at the exact same place. That's the miracle of the math and the circle and the degrees and all that. I would stick to doing it this way. The answer is going to be the same. And if you always do things the same way, you tend to have better result. OK. Our power is equal to the sine of a squared multiplied times our cylinder plus our sphere. If you take our 143 and you hit your sign button in your scientific calculator, you should end up at 0 0.6018. Go ahead. If you have that number pulled up into your calculator and you hit your square button, you should end up at 0 0.362. Now you may hit your multiplication and put in your 3.75, hit your plus minus button, your friend, your plus minus button, and you're going to end up at minus 1.358. This is not the number you're after. The number you're after is your minus 1.358, which is the cylinder value at that position, plus your total power of your minus 6.25, which gives you minus 7.60 at 180 degrees, which is what we're after. Now, you would do the same thing for the other lens, working this all through. You'd have the two total powers that you needed to start working a prism problem through. So, next week, when we pick this up again, that is exactly where we're going to start. So, we're through uh, with this kind of stuff. Plenty more examples on the Optician Works website. Always an email away. Watch these a couple of times. Work your calculator. You're going to get it. And sooner or later, if you work it for a while, draw this stuff out. Draw your optical cross. Fill in all the other angles and the numbers. It'll, it'll click. Eventually, the light bulb will go on. It's like, oh, OK, now I finally get it. Remember that building up, building down in power thing. In the meantime, study, and I will see you next week. See you then.